Alloys Podcast. This is Kyle with... What's going on? It's Pierre. We have a very special guest. Possibly, and when I say possibly, I mean absolutely my favorite artist of all time. Ryan Stegman is here. I don't Hello. know how this happened. Well, you begged. I did beg. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you've been a longtime supporter. You know, you came up at conventions. And, oh, you caught that. <laughs> yeah. And you had a cool name for your podcast, so it, it stuck with me. That's not true. <laughs> Hold on. Someone told us it sounded like hemorrhoids. Well, who was well, that? yeah, that's why I like it. Frank Cho said that. We'll yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Frank Cho said that. That's... Thank you for being here. We have a ton of questions for you. Uh, some are fun and some are dumber than the others. Pierre, why don't you just get us started? All right, let's get right into it. Now, this is a really tough question that our viewers mm -hmm. are dying to know. Who is your favorite and mm -hmm. least favorite Disney princess? <sighs> well, this is tough. I mean, probably Jasmine's my favorite. And I'm not going to go into why because I don't want to be on a watch list. You know, she was a big part of my childhood, if you catch my drift. Least favorite. Belle, just because she's kind of like generic. She's just like the prototypical Disney princess. There's a million of her. I like it. Does that satisfy you guys? It does. I had the same I picks, so. actually. All I right, had the same cool. picks as Ryan Stegman. For the record, everyone. The same. Is this how every <laughs> uh, question that is asked, you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, me too. Same. Yep. Same yeah. Too. yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly similar, but more realistic for legacy characters, whether Marvel, DC, you could even say a spawn. What character would you want to work on that you haven't? And being you're writing more now to draw, to write. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of answers here, but Batman's an obvious one just because it's a big deal. If you get to the point where you're doing Batman, like I've done Spider-Man. It's basically Spider-Man and Batman for me. And I've done Spider-Man. So, you know, Batman would be next up. That's my overarching answer. That's the real full answer. But you said Spawn. That got me excited, you know, right out of the gate. I would love to do some stuff with Thor as I've done a little bit here and there, but I haven't really gotten to have my full take out there on him. Wolverine, I did some of Wolverine, but I don't really feel like I got to, you know, sink my teeth into it he's one of my favorite characters you know it's like batman and then there's the next tier of characters drawing wise for writing wise you know i'd love to write some spider-man i feel like i could do it just because i wrote some of amazing spider-man new year vows it's just part of my dna so it wouldn't be too difficult and i think that you know i'd have something to say with it, it might be difficult because i've loved so much of what's come in the past that maybe it would be hard to divorce myself from it Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think that writing it would be Spider-Man and then drawing it's the other ones because I've already drawn Spider-Man. I think Kyle had it's, the same answers. Yeah, so I was going to say, same yeah, for you. Was, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he was going to say. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. If I did notice you drew a futuristic Wolverine at one point, mm -hmm. and I think it was on your Instagram page where you said, like, what your plan was with this futuristic Wolverine. Would you want to kind of approach that type of story? I can't talk about that right now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, there's things happening behind the scenes all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do stuff with that design. You know, like I said, Wolverine is a great character. So, you know, if he did happen to be in Asgard, I could kill two birds with one stone, get Thor in there. So, you know, we'll see. Going into the next question here. Describe your routine. I'll give you what I've been doing lately. I've been waking up and then I will, you know, get my kids to school. And then I come down here about... 8 45 a.m and then i will write for about an hour because i've kind of found that you know like as you said i've been writing more and i have found that if i don't write every day then i lose the momentum of it so i've been trying to just keep momentum going write for about an hour then i do a layout and then i sit at my drafting board and i draw for you know until dinner time and then after dinner a lot of times i will take you know masonite board upstairs and i'll draw on the couch well, I hang out with the family or whatever. So, you know, there's also at about noon, I will go exercise and get that out of the way. So it's kind of the same thing every single day. I try to do the same thing every day because I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm a creature of habit. You wouldn't know it by like how messy I am and how disorganized, but it's almost like I'm so disorganized that I have to do the same thing every day or nothing gets done. So when I'm left to my own devices on the weekend, I do pretty much nothing. Uh, <laughs> so yeah but that's pretty much exactly my routine on a day-to-day -day basis so my next question is kind of tied to that's kind of like how you procrastinate i find myself you know going through tiktok and i find these oh, yeah. videos do you ever see people cleaning area rugs professionally Dude, uh, any of those cleaning videos oh, are so God. mesmerizing or like the toilet ones the toilet ones are a little like how are you wasting that much product like how are you not arrested you're making like a chemical bomb that can't be healthy i will get sucked into stuff like TikTok, or i do sudoku puzzles crossword puzzles i'm big into puzzles just in general it's basically ends up being yeah if it's procrastinating if it's like the thing where you like how did i just lose an hour it's always <laughs> messing around on my phone doing puzzles or yeah. whatever other than that i watch tv with my kids and i watch 
quite a bit of basketball and football, whether it's because I end up playing on my phone or, you know, whatever. I basically can only watch like one hour of TV a day, which is a huge bummer because I used to really be able to get in some good hours. Right. But, you know, I've got an 11 year old and an eight year old and I have to work all the time. So most of my uh, time is spoken for. Like when I go up to eat dinner tonight, right? I'll go up there and while I'm waiting, I'll probably just like do a puzzle on my phone and then go eat and then get back to work. Tonight's going to be a long night. You know, I already know that I have to ink something. So Sudoku, so it's like good for your mind, right? So it's not a bad thing to waste time with. I guess. Uh, I mean, it's kind of the same thing over and over. Yeah. I've been on a Marvel Snap, which uh, Kyle told me to download it. And I was strongly against it because it's a stupid ass card base game. Uh-huh. And I take it all back because I'm fully invested in it. And I spend hours in this game. I could see myself getting into that. There's a game called Star Terrible. Realms. Have you ever played that? Star mm-hmm. Realms? Basically a card game, RPG, whatever. And I would play that with my wife. And then I found out there was an app with it. And then I just started playing it constantly. <laughs> and like, I always end up having to delete these apps because I'm like, I can't play this anymore. This is insane. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I could totally yeah. see Snap getting a hold of me. Yeah. Words with friends and Snap. Those are my advice. Oh, no, yeah. It's not good. Not good at all. I'm sure you've been asked the question before. Artists, writers, people that you like that you draw inspiration off of. We know that. But what about any new up and coming artists that you're kind of a fan of? Well, that depends on your definition of up and coming because like, you know, I'm friends with Daniel Warren Johnson. He's younger than me. So, but he's kind of like arrived, right? Yeah. He's been there. Yeah. This is a funny question. Cause like everybody that I think of as up and coming, I just forgot that I got old and they're now <laughs> old too. But I've talked to Justin Mason a few times. He's a really good young artist. He's doing some stuff at Marvel. That's really cool. Tom Riley. I know is a young guy. He's really good off the top of my head. Those are the ones I can name, but you know, I'm sure if I was paying closer attention again, like I'm distracted by my own children all the time that I miss so much of what's going on right now. So those are the two off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's a, a million others. Do you ever see yourself like pulling some techniques or like adding something from newer artists that you're seeing? Of course. I mean, you're always pulling from people. The way that I generally read comics is I'll read a bunch in a row. The same one. I don't read them week to week. And then I feel like any eagle-eyed, you know, reader of my stuff would be able to pick up what I had been reading at that time. It's like osmosis. It just starts coming out mm. in your work. It's almost like I'll get to a point where I'm like, All right, all right, all right, Ryan. Draw like yourself. Stop doing this, you know, (laughs) this new thing. But it's impossible to not have that happen most of the time. Is there any new techniques that you could kind of explain roughly that you picked up that are now like a daily use kind of thing? Yeah, no, I mean, I've been watching uh, some of David Finch's YouTube videos. I found that sometimes if you're like really struggling to stay at the drafting table, because you're just like, I don't want to do any more work. If you find somebody else's drawing video and just sit there with it. It'll keep you motivated. And uh, I've learned a lot. There was an episode with Eric Canetti that he taught me some things that really, I just was like, my mind was blown. He talked about how he thinks of everything as balloons, which I've stolen now. Like even the figures, they're like 80% full balloons. The water would move as they move. And that kind of like gives you these bulges and all the things that make it look like it's in motion. And I tend to be more of like a very, I know the anatomy inside and out. So it's fun to like learn a new technique that takes me out of reality and gives me the chance to, you know, really play around. You know, Finch was just talking about the way that he does pull outs with his pencil when he pulls out the line from the shadow and he starts in the shadow rather than right on the edge, which is what I used to do. And it does make you like more, you know, fluid with everything. So it's little things, but you know, they add up over time. And I feel like I'm always adding new techniques and stuff to what I do. I feel like you might even probably run into artists using your techniques at this point too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's one of the few things cool about being old. You know, we missed all these conventions because of uh, COVID and I was at New York this year and it was like the first time that we had like a really big Marvel party and all the foreign artists were there and stuff. And I walked in and I don't even remember the name because I was probably a little bit sauced, but I walked in with Steve McNiven and this guy comes running up and he's like, wait, you're Ryan Stegman. He's like, you're the reason I draw comics. And this happened several Damn. times where they're like, you're Ryan Stegman. I love, uh, you know, like these young guys right. coming up. And so that was really cool because like when we started Venom, that's kind of when, you know, things kind of escalated to a new level. So I wouldn't say that that was like the norm. And it just happened several times at this last show. And I was just like, oh man, I mean, this is like really cool, but also like I'm the old guy now, like <laughs> these young guys come up flying up to you and you're like, oh yeah, I used to be you, you know, I was running up to, you know, Steve McNiven or Olivier, you know, like the guys that I really admired and doing the same thing. So 
it's pretty cool yeah and i do have to say as much as kyle is like a huge huge fan i think honestly your work on ben on the artwork and you know donny kate's writing whatever it did pull me in for sure into comics because like for a while i didn't read um mm -hmm. anything just here and there but that run fully brought me back into the comics like now i'm spending way too much <laughs> to the point yeah, well, where my fiance definitely called me out on it she's like what are you doing and i was like i don't know i had to sit down and look at everything i was like wow it got out of hand real quick i do think that sometimes you know like the, we have the klc press and some of the guys will come on they'll be like i just started collecting comics and now i have all the you know and i'm like are you married <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it changes the dynamic for sure yeah, my wife she's always like you're gonna have to put that in a box and put it in storage and i just keep you know building new shelves so that i can <laughs> store more stuff that's it more shelves yeah well, that's the answer i put stuff away and then i'll find it years later I'm like oh i didn't know i own that that's yeah. cool yeah i mean it's fun I have like these bins behind me. It's all graded books. I mean, New York, I sent like 15 books out. I purposely didn't do fast track because right. I'm like, I don't know where to put them. So you keep them as long as you want, but you know, <laughs> I want them just, I have no space right now. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So next question about the spider verse. That's very prevalent right now. You've worked on a few Spider-Mans in the past. Looking at Spider-Verse now, any versions that you have in mind that you'd like to create one day or maybe even throw into the Spider-Verse currently? I mean, I think there's enough of them at this point. <laughs> there's always room for more, apparently. There's a dynamism like, now. I find that I really enjoy creating villains more than the heroes just because I already love the heroes, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I didn't create Scarlet Spider, I mean Kane, but I really enjoyed creating a new look for a Spider-Man. So that's fun. But as far as new ones, I don't know. There are just so many now. Just let me create more villains. So Superior Spider-Man is kind of... I would say what really introduced me to you. How much influence do you have on those costumes? On Superior Spider-Man, I didn't really have any because mm -hmm. when I came in, Ed McGinnis had designed the original costume and then mm -hmm. Umberto had designed the second costume. I was the young new guy at the time. I wasn't going to come in and be like, I want to design it, you know? And I liked what they did, honestly. So yeah, really on that one, I was not involved in that process. But, you know, again, like it was just a dream come true to get to do it. I think technically the first time I started to stalk you and I oh, have yeah. it on video too i've posted on our story once in a while but Not you were doing at all <laughs> no, no, no. You were doing little, uh, you know remarks and i have you on video and you were talking about like you want to do punisher with a bandana on like whatever oh, conversation like that that's what we caught and that was the snippet but yeah. he should always have a bandana for sure i want to talk more about superior for a second of uh, more so like when superior wrapped like the feeling you had of concluding that run versus the feeling when venom concluded because then obviously you moved on to vanish so just i guess the difference in feelings from wrapping that big run to the venom giant run that it was well superior spider-man was different because i wasn't on it as long you know that was probably about a year of my life maybe a year mm. and a half whereas venom took up the better part of what three or four years but then again like superior spider-man i was continuing to do marvel stuff so i went and i did wolverine and inhuman and all that you know like kept doing different series and i would say that was a little more difficult because what was coming up i was so uncertain but when i left venom i felt like we said everything we wanted to say and we already had this new cool project that we were working on so i really just felt like excited to get into vanish again like superior spider-man i kind of you know i was offered a Wolverine number one, you know, you're kind of like, how do I not do this when I'm just coming off Superior Spider-Man? Right. But at the same time, there were still doubts like, but I really love Spider-Man. Maybe I should just stay here. This one, it was like Venom. We were done with it. We told the whole story. Right. I just kind of felt like that's it. That's a wrap. Let's move on to the next thing. And, you know, again, like I said, we had the new cool thing. So it's probably easier than you would think because, you know, I'm just sitting in my basement making this stuff and, you know, you don't really know how much it's affected people or, you know, other people, you know, think about it in this sort of romantic way, but I just kind of lived through it, did all of it, enjoyed it, finished it and moved on. It's fair. I like that you use the word romantic. Like, I didn't, like, purposely put superior behind me or anything, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> all right, so I have a bunch of tattoos, right? So you can't really tell because I'm wearing all this clothes. But when I go to my tattoo artist, I like knowing what style they like to do because I want them to feel good about the art that they're about to ink. When you're presented a project and you're given the freedom to do that, do you feel like that's when you get to be at your best? Yes. I think that, you know, that's kind of one of the cool things about comic books is that you get the job because your style is palatable and people 
like what you do, but you're not expected to draw a certain way. They just wouldn't hire you if they wanted somebody that drew a certain way, that drew differently than you. I kind of always feel empowered when I get on things. I'll, sometimes too much, I feel like when I did Inhuman, I kept changing styles just because nobody was telling me not to. And I was messing around and trying different things. And then I've found that doing Vanish even, I've improved a lot as an artist because I do have that freedom to do whatever I want. and. I don't have the history of other people working on the book prior to me. This is my world. Anybody that draws anything Vanish related from this point is basing it on what I did, which is really cool in the first time that I've had that experience and I feel like it's helped me grow a lot. But at the same time, like, as long as people are responding positively to what I'm doing, I feel like I don't want to change. I already am a very like commercial minded. So I'm drawing the way that I want to draw and it, people seem to be responding and that's all there is to it. Don't change it if it ain't broke. Right. Or <laughs> just change it a bunch and get mad at yourself. <laughs> Whichever works best. Yeah. Whatever you say. I know Kyle like, will agree. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> How about like the gore filter? Like, do you feel a difference from that? Coming from Marvel, like there's no holding back. You could blow people's heads off without a question asked. It's been pretty rare that they've censored me at Marvel. And I think that I have a governor in my head. I just know where the line is. You know, I don't really cross it, but in Vanish, I've definitely found for sure that I am just like, yeah, whatever I want to draw, I'm going to draw. It's not even like I'm thinking like I have to push this to the limit. It's just that there is no limit. So I just do whatever I want. I own this shit, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Vanish, if you want to just give a quick synopsis, you've probably done it a thousand times. The chosen one trope of, you know, like a Harry Potter or even somewhat X-Men-ish, where it's the story of the chosen one who is now grown up and like a child star is, you know, falling apart because, you know, they peaked at this young age. They don't have a direction in life and they can't get that glory back. So the main character, Oliver Harrison, he killed the big bad of the world of Everkeep and then has to grow up dealing with the fact that he <laughs> murdered a man when he was like 13 years old. And it's, you know, driven him a little bit insane. And he starts thinking that he's seeing some of the bad guys from Everkeep in the real world. And he starts going on a mission to hunt them down. And it's kind of like Harry Potter meets Inglorious Bastards, you know, meets the boys is what we say. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So is there anything you're doing differently with your art on Vanish that you haven't done before? Personally, we really like the way you made effects for the glamours. And in yeah. one, we noticed there was like some blur effects. There was like selective like focus. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the selective focus is Sonya the colorist, and oh, okay. Frank colored Venom, and he's one of my favorite colorists of all time, and so is Sonya, and, you know, they just kind of have different ways of doing things. Frank, we would have loved to bring him along to Vanish, but he didn't have time at the time that we started, but Sonya, she did my Renew Your Vow stuff, and I had been trying to get her back to work with her for a long time, and finally was able to get her, and she brings that stuff to the table, but the digitizing effects of the magic was just kind of like a fun way that I hadn't seen magic really like i hadn't seen it used that way before the only thing that i would say that i've changed in my art from venom to vanish is i just gotten a little bit better i wanted to keep the train rolling forward from venom to vanish i felt like we had a big hit with venom if i came out and drew completely different or did things much different i didn't want to like put anybody off because i'm trying to sell this you know so that i can draw this comic book forever so yeah we just kind of tried to do the same thing and you know i may have changed technique or you know this or that but i definitely am a better artist right now than i was when i was doing venom well i mean it's my favorite poll obviously i get to read it early as a klc press subscriber as you know but with that can you tell us about issue three at all well so Issue two, we definitely slowed things down. Issue one was a lot of information to get you into the world and get you set up for the book. Issue two was we worked a lot on the emotional aspects of the story and really gave you insight into our main characters in the story. And then issue three, everything goes crazy. And it's just action, balls to the wall action. Same with issue four. So it speeds right back up and it's brutal and it's violent and... Yeah, just a lot of insanity in there. Yeah, I don't know about you, Kyle, but when I read issue one, I feel like I got punched in the face and pulled into the comic book. Like, yeah. No, yeah. But like that one scene where he, it's just a zoom in on his face, he's getting crushed. Oh, yeah. That moment, I was like, okay, let's do this. Like, well, what is this comic book all about? You know, definitely excited to see where this is going, especially issue three. Yeah, it should be cool. I mean, I'll be interested to see how people respond to it because it's 
Like I said, it's violent, but it's exciting. It's an exciting issue. As you might have heard, Kenny Porter has come on our show three times now. That's too many, why. Kenny. Yeah, I don't know why he keeps coming back. He actually <laughs> asked the last time. I was like, wait, you want to come back? I love sure. Kenny. Yeah, yeah, Kenny's the best. But you recently announced that you're going to be doing the schlub with him. I guess the question is, if you could give us any more tidbits and then just how it is writing with Kenny. I don't want to give away too much. Yeah, I mean, people can go to klcpress.com to see the preview pages that we put up, you know, with Tyrell's art and... Mm -hmm. We're going to put out some color pages soon. But working with Kenny is amazing. I mean, nobody's more professional than Kenny. Kenny has a day job still. He's writing at DC. He's writing an image book with me. He's got all these irons in the fire. And yet he still goes to his nine to five and does his day job. And if he says he'll have something to you that night, he will have that thing to you. It's kind of a perfect combo because, you know, for this particular book, I had the concept and the characters and I had started writing it actually. I was going to write it myself before I ended up taking Venom and doing that. So then I handed him all the material and I said, you know, you're a better writer than me. Could you help me with this? And then we just started, you know, spitballing and going back and forth. And, you know, like I said, he just plows ahead. I almost have to keep up with him, even though I have less of the heavy lifting on the individual issues. It's more like we will talk on the phone. I ramble a bunch of crazy ideas. He'll throw them back at me and we kind of morph him into something. And then like two days later, I'll have a script. And then I go through and I mark that up and add my stuff. And then, you know, we just keep going back and forth doing that until it's done and it's been working out great that's pretty cool mm -hmm. but what you're saying is we should try and get him fired like make like a hashtag of get Look. kenny fired so he can do this more he needs more time oh get him fired him. from his day job on the schlub <laughs> i definitely threaten him to fire him all the time but oh. <laughs> that's just because i'm a jerk who thinks it's funny <laughs> to do stuff like that yeah no he doesn't need to get fired we're working on it if the schlub makes enough money maybe we'll do like a, a campaign that'll be our advertising campaign like get kenny out of his day job if you buy enough copies of the schlub kenny will quit because that's kind of the idea we're hoping that happens for him how about any other writing projects i'm sure you can't tell us but i have to ask i have to try vaguely speaking i'm working on something that i'm writing myself right now and uh, i'm always involved in the writing on vanish you know that's another situation like on venom i was very much a i could throw in ideas here and there and then you know donnie would take them and run with them but sometimes on vanish i'm just doing whatever i want and then he works to what I do and you know I've dialogued some of it and you know all that so but yeah I tend to do a lot more writing going forward I found that yeah. I kind of enjoy it who knew oh no, yeah do you think you'll ever do a book where you do both yeah I'd love to that would be something that I'd be very interested in doing for sure yeah I mean writing for an artist is cool but I found that you know like I said like some of the vanish or even in venom when I would get the pages where I'd just kind of get to make up the 10 pages in a row of fighting or in Vanish, um, you know, basically we just kind of plotted out an issue and I'm writing it and drawing it. And I found that I tend to get very creative with the layouts when I do that because I'm mm -hmm. in control of everything and I'm beholden to no one. So it's another level of freedom that uh, makes you try new things. What issue is that? Just out of curiosity. Well, let's hold off on saying that. <laughs> okay. All let's right. pass. <laughs> <laughs> all right we do try and get spoilers like we're really annoying about that but we've actually never been successful if i'm being honest no not once no i'll say it it's issue five I, yes I, we got I, it yeah. <laughs> i've done a lot of that heavy lifting we did that. it kyle <laughs> Issue five. All right, cool. I'm excited. To Issue four answer. has a lot of my own flourishes as well. So do you feel like, I guess so far, right? Issue one, two is out. Issue three is coming out. What have you kind of added to it? Well, I'd have to think because you guys haven't read issue three yet. So I don't want to say something from issue three or four. Well, for example, this is just a very brief example, but you know, Baron Vanish, when I designed him, he ended up having those spider legs that come up around him. Now that had nothing to do with the story at that point. But once Donnie saw it and we started talking about it, that became a whole thing that is now part of the story, you know, and I started throwing out ideas about why they were there. Yeah, it's just kind of stuff like that where I'll do something and he'll just be like, oh, that's a good idea. That was a good idea. I didn't even think about that. And then he, you know, calls it back later. No, it's funny that you mentioned the spider legs because that was like something that I noticed. Like, I feel like the texture on the spider legs and then just the guts, the line work, everything's been pretty awesome with that. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Are you beginning to prefer independent work? It sounds like you are. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely things that are fun about working for Marvel, obviously. Like, I have had nothing but a good experience over time working there. But, you know, yeah, it, it hits a little bit different when you own it and it's your baby 
And like I said, again, like nobody having done it before you and you getting to kind of make everything up yourself is very liberating and also getting fan response and feeling like they're not just liking this book because it's got venom in it. They're liking it because they like me and Donnie's work, you know, like what we've right. created. So it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, for sure. If you could choose one, Symbiote, Signet Ring, or $10 million? Oh, man. I'm going to take the $10 million. Wow. I was going to make it less to make it more challenging. And I was like, yeah, what's a million dollars anymore? I need uh, about 15 million to be able to just do whatever I want for the rest of my life. Right. So 10 million gets you pretty close to that. And the signet ring, I guess I could just manifest whatever I want, but you can't manifest a vacation. Right. Unless, I don't know. This is a tough question. Come on. <laughs> Definitely not a symbiote though. I mean, those things are weird. They get all up in your head and maybe you're into it. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, eat a person. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. It's in right now. It's a trending Netflix. <laughs> all right. So up next. Name that change. No, 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 no. All right. Great job. We know kids <laughs> love chains. We know you love chains. You love drawing chains. But how well do you know chains? And that's the general theme of this. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a chain game. A game of chains, if you will. So I'm looking at my own drawing of Spawn from the cover of Scorched number one or two that okay. McFarlane inked. All right. So uh, uh, not a strong start for Paneloids. Yes, you're correct. It is Spawn. And it's my drawing. It is. Yes. It is. I tried. Some will be really easy. Some will be kind of obnoxious. Boom. Whew. That got a is hand holding a chain. Is that the Hand Batman is... who laughs? Oh no! Mm. All right, we are on wow. a roll. That was good. That was okay. good. So we're not keeping track of points, but technically we are because it's recording. But for bonus points, which I don't really know how we judge. Versus what you guys are seeing right now is Spawn versus Batman who laughs. Stegman is stumped. He's sweating. He's not sure what. To Wait, do. what am I supposed oh. to do? Okay, Pierre, <laughs> explain a little bit. <laughs> well, he actually doesn't know what he's supposed to do. So let me explain it now. We don't necessarily have a goal here, but Spawn versus Batman who laughs. Which one wins? I'm going to go with Spawn because he's from freaking hell. And also, the Batman Who Laughs pissed me off because we came mm -hmm. out with Null before Batman Who Laughs, and then people kept asking if we were inspired by Batman Who Laughs when we made Really? Call. I've never heard no. of that. Like, what? Yeah, I've like, never heard that. They, wow. I think they were, they were very close to being concurrent, but neither of us had seen the other one's character. Mm, Batman Who Laughs basically is like a Judge Dredd villain. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, but he's cool looking. I have no ill will towards, you know, the actual design. I think it's well, awesome. We, now we hate yeah. him. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. Panaloids listeners also hate it. Yes. Yeah, so, so we spoke about bulges earlier. We decided to throw a bulge in here for you. So bulge with the chain. Name that chain. That is Luke Cage. All right. That's Fantastic. Right. He's got a great bulge. Oh, here's another chain. Kind of a bulge, but different type of bulge. I think this is going to be Beta Ray Bill. Oh my god. Is that your final him? answer? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> is it Thor? So it is Thor in a very unseemly costume with a chain, apparently, well, to the hammer. Did you notice? Go back one frame there. Four fingers. Oh, he yeah. Has, we're... He's holding it a little differently. So. I hate this. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> that this is, is a crazy from design. Thor 502. Versus. We have Luke Cage versus Thor. But, I mean, there's Luke obviously Cage. a winner here, but. If you want to judge them by their outfits, that might be a better versus. Outfit-wise, we're going with Luke Cage, yeah. but Thor obviously would win. God, this is such a crazy drawing of Thor. <laughs> yeah. I'll email it over in case you want to, like, make a wallpaper or something. Why is his stomach out? It no. doesn't make sense. It's not, right. it's not okay. Crop shirts were in. Cosmic Ghost Rider. Okay, that was a little too easy. I'm sorry. Yes. And how about this one, then? Oh. Huh. Oh. Oh. Do, do, this is do, the clearest do, 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 screen do, do, grab I could grab of do, do, this. Is this a Ghost Rider character? Like, is this a nullified Ghost Rider? It is a Ghost Rider. It is some kind of symbiote. So what you guys are looking at right now, for the people at home, there's a hook in his hand, and there's a bunch of spikes. And there's a lot of black, and there's some red, and there's some chains. That's the best way I can describe it. It's Venom Ghost Rider? It is a Venom Ghost Rider, and there's one other character mixed in there. I guess the real guess is who is Ghost Rider and Venom attached to. Hmm. 
Who is it? Now you're confusing me. Yes, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> it's all three. <laughs> all right, pack. all right. I should have guessed that. Combo pack of Red Hulk, Venom, and Ghost Rider. That's right. We stumped you. We should just start doing stories called like it's just three characters mashed together and see what happens. Yeah, that was my theme with this versus here, was let's just mash everything together. and I have to go with Red Hulk, Venom, Ghost Rider, because okay. he's three characters, and Cosmic Ghost Rider is just, well, kind of two characters. Okay, right? I'll tell Donny Cates to chose someone else's character. That's fine. Oh, Chains. <laughs> what am I supposed to say to the people out there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> someone as pale as I am. <laughs> very pale, almost ghost-like. Looks like Casper in Chains. The very it's... muscly Casper. This is either... Frank Quitely drawing or an Aaron Cooter drawing? That's my no, guess on that. No, I didn't check into that like I should have. <sighs> it's not Lobo, is it? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah! And that is Aaron Cooter. I think that's Aaron Cooter. All right. This one, I didn't zoom in because nobody knows this, but I thought the balloons were funny. Pierre, if you want to read them in your best voice. Yeah, yeah. That was always your problem, Meat Rag. You were always daydreaming. Meat Rag? Gross. Yeah. <laughs> So what we have is a guy in a green shirt with chains. So I can't imagine you guessed this one. It's actually from an X-Men comic, X-Men 2099, issue number 22 from 1995. This would be Chain Man, and those chains are really half-assed. Go vroom, not... vroom, 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 vroom. But I guess I don't great. know how small this panel is. I don't know if he ever was in another panel. He has no powers, he just really likes chains, and his name is Chain Link. Chain Ooh, Link. That's a oh, cool we'll give it to you. And then obviously, I don't even know if you have to say this one, I don't think Chain Link's gonna win against Lobo. Oh, yeah, Lobo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Venom 200, the last page of my Venom run. One of my favorite panels of all time. He knows his art. He knows his art. I tried to get him. Oh, you have it cropped? You have it cropped where you can't see? Donnie and I were in the window waving goodbye. Oh, no. Yeah. That's I've, awesome. I don't know if I actually caught that before. Never caught yeah, it. Yeah, me and JP and Frank are in the other. That's oh. such a cool little thing. That is cool. <laughs> um, my next slide's broken, so there's Chains. that. So you're not going to guess this one, but it was your character. I zoomed in, obviously. There he is. Chain. He's beautiful. He is. It's a beautiful. fantastic you design. It. Obviously would have guessed it, but then, of course, now... What are you choosing? You got Venom, Dylan Brock versus Oliver Harrison. I'm going to go... Unfortunately, I have to say Dylan Brock would win this fight because oh. Oliver Harrison is so broken at this point. Okay, so from this, you won. Yeah. That's fair. Now, Dylan Brock versus Baron Vanish. Mmm. 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 Unless there was a gun involved. Mm-hmm. That. Spoiler. Spoiler. Well, yeah. Spoiler alert. And that was Name That Chain. I apologize. You did very well. You win. I don't really know what would have happened if you lost, but here we are. Anything you want to say about KLC Press and uh, any upcoming releases you want to say, and then we'll set you free. Yeah, check out klcpress.com. There's a free option for the newsletter, or you can pay and get the pdfs of our books as they come out early you get a discount in the stag world shop which has all kinds of variant covers for vanish you get a peek inside the process of us making these comic books the schlub and vanish issue three when this is out issue three will definitely be on klcpress.com go join and just sign up for the free one see if you like it if you want to join up for the paid subscription do that later but yeah it's fun all right well i don't know how i could possibly thank you enough for giving a whole hour of your life I'll we never get it back. No, you're never, ever going to get it back. <laughs> nope, it's, we took it's it. It's gone. Gone. You've lost an it. hour of procrastinating now. That's it for you. I'm more so Sudoku work. tonight. I'll find a way. <laughs> Appreciate it. And uh, it was really fun. And we hope to do it again. But really, a uh, longtime fan. And, and thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you from us both. It's like my wedding day right now. Like that's how excited I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, I hope it doesn't show. If it starts to show, I'll just leave. <laughs> that, that would be fine. I'll edit in some kind of natural disaster. That there you go. <laughs> just closes out. Less that just that. creeping closer to the mouse to click out of it. Yeah, that would be good. Panaloids. Sweet background, by the way. Who, me? Behind oh, yeah. You me. got my fireplace and all that. That's yeah. pretty solid. Yeah. Sweet setup. It almost seems like I did it on purpose, but really I just had a fireplace put it in and then it happened to all line up. And you can't quite tell how messy it really is in here, so that's good too. Panaloids. Hold on a second. Yep. Boys! Boys!
I'm doing a uh, podcast right now. I've got some bloopers. Perfect. Analoids. You have a villain in mind? Man spider. You know, there's Batman and man bat. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have it then. A spider's, a spider's body with a man's head. That's what I want to do. Oh, oh okay. no, they don't have that. No, they, <laughs> they don't have that. That's, I can for sure say fresh. they don't have that. Yeah. Like a minotaur spider. <laughs> I guess there is room for another Spider-Man because mm -hmm. you just made one, so congrats. You heard it here <laughs> first. Analoids. Why didn't you tell me about this? No, I, like, wanted to fix my background up and put, like, a few things just to be a little corny. And, like, I'm digging through the shelf. And, damn, I have a lot of stuff. Here's this print. Here's Venom on a throne. Like, you know, little Easter eggs of uh, money I've spent because of you. Analoids. <laughs> Pierre just... I don't know. Say some stuff while I figure this out. So my favorite color is green. Oh, what? well. <laughs> Analoids. I made a game show. It's really stupid, but I think it's kind of funny. We did this. Actually... Don't bring it down. You spent a lot of time. It's a fun little I game spent show. an embarrassing amount of time on this. All right. How do I present? Kenny this? loved it. Kenny had a great time. But Kenny also knows a full history of every Gundam that ever existed. Analoids. But before we end it, is there anything that we didn't touch that you want to go in on? I'm mm. mad at my son for getting a B in math. I'm really looking forward to having maybe a dirty martini. All right, all right. I really thought that was important that we cover that. Um, Pierre, what definitely. are you drinking this whole time, actually? I was a margarita, and I am done. I'm actually down for a refill, and my DoorDash <laughs> actually arrived, so. Oh. You're having a good night. <laughs> Analoids. All right. I'm going to go. Cool. All right. Take man. Thanks. Thanks for real though. That was fun.